today, I must, must, I simply must get this down in my diary. What's happened to me overnight, and just, just so I can exalt the Lord yet again, and and just share to everybody just the way He's working in my life, and just the latest version of that, really. So you know that recently I have been starting to put down the idea that I believe that these locations that we talk about in the Bible, such as Jericho and and um, and Canaan and Jerusalem, they're all yes, they're all physical locations, but they're also a spiritual a spiritual place where you dwell as well. So they're. They're a spiritual destination as well. So I used the example there yesterday. If I wanted to act on my grand affliction, I would sojourn down, down meaning a spiral down um, to Oxford Street. And then when I came back up to come back to where I dwell now in Jerusalem, I would have to come back up to Jerusalem. And I just want to play just a clip that I played, just a little clip there that I, from the video I did there yesterday. I'll play that now. Now, this is a story all about Judah. So Judah went down and he, and, and I find it, I, I find it interesting to the language that I believe that these locations also, also are, they're a spiritual place. They're a spiritual destination as well. So in, in my old life with my grand affliction, if I wanted to act on that, I would now go down to Oxford Street. Because it's a it's a place that's spiritually under where I dwell today spiritually. So I'm thinking I'm dwelling in Jerusalem. I'm not sure about that, but let's say I am. I'm dwelling in Jerusalem, so I would now go down to that place because it's not a not a place. Uh, it's it's a it's a it's a diminished place from where I am now. And I might go with somebody that I love. I might go and they, they're, they're doing something that's that's of the flesh, let's say. We're going, you know, to the shops so to, to, to buy things that we don't need. And I'll just go for them for the day just to keep them company or for me to have their company or whatever. That means I'm going down to that land which would have the name of so-and-so. So that's sort of what I'm starting to think because you see it quite a lot where they go down and then they go back up to Jerusalem and... And it's always up and down and mountains and valleys. And I, I don't know, I'm just sort of picking that theme up because I believe, I've said this before, that I believe these places, yes, these stories probably did happen physically, but they also represent a spiritual um, destination as well. Okay, so you can see from that clip that yesterday, now, d don't get me wrong, this is not to praise me and say I'm right or anything like No, 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 it's just... This is a diary of me and my walk with the Lord since the days I found Christ. This is a diary of that, and I just want to get it down of how he's worked in my life again overnight. So I believe he's confirmed what I'm saying, and to me it's just unlocking lots for me in the Bible, and it's given me some real direction with where I should go next. So the Bible verse of the day comes through this morning and was from the book book of Isaiah, chapter 66, verse 13. As one whom his mother comforteth, so will I comfort you, and ye shall be comforted in Jerusalem. Now, I'm not going to find any comfort today if I go to Jerusalem because it's going to be full of white Jews who are full of hatred, who are full of entitlement, who are full of lies, who are being led by Benjamin Netanyahu, who is drinking of the most wicked, vile wine of his works. So what does this verse actually mean? It means it's a spiritual place of which I dwell right now. So Jerusalem, yes, it's a place, but it's also a physical location. So when you read all of these scriptures in the Bible, that they, there'll be a good coming together of the elect and we will be return to Jerusalem. It's exactly what Nehemiah was talking about in, in chapter 13 of Nehemiah that I read out the other day. It's exactly the same thing. So wh where I'm going now, where I'm going now is... I'm going to go home. This is what I'm going to do this afternoon. I'm going to go home and I'm going to research this, research, research this. But, but the at the Tower of Babel, the, the earth was of one union and speech. Okay, so what that means is that all of the lands come together and all of the gods 
they worship come together so well they were all unified all of the lands all of the people every word that they spoke every language they spoke they all come together as one in darkness and there's 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 land in the world the land it looks as though that land is the land of canaan and that's what this was all about with Abraham. He was purifying that land of which the people could again dwell. And he picked the, the people of Israel, the seed of Israel, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the land of which they dwelt. Each tribe took portions of the land of Canaan, of which was purified. And that's where this Ark of the Covenant's going to come in, in the Garden of Eden, in the two cherubims that sit him. That sit that where the Lord of Hosts sits between the two cherubims upon the upon the mercy seat in Numbers. It's that 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 comes into all this as well. And then there was a seed. But today, today I'm going to go home and work on all of this stuff about the land. I'm going to work on the land. What all the lands mean? Because to me, it looks as though at the moment there's evil land. There was Egypt. And then there was, and then there was the land of Canaan. Maybe there's half and half, because there's half darkness, half light in the world, isn't there? There's, that, that's what it's light and dark. It's half and half, and this yin yang nonsense where one can dwell in the other. No, no, no. But it's interesting as I say that because Sodom, the land of Sodom, because that's where Lot went, and him and him and Abraham, Abraham and Lot. And there's a scripture there actually I read this morning in Genesis. I can't think of it off the top of my head. But there's a scripture there in Genesis that says that that um, Abraham and Lot both went to, they both went to the land of Canaan. But uh, Abraham dwelt, I think, in the plains or something. I'm not sure where Abraham dwelt, but 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 Lot, he dwelt in he he dwelt with his tent pitched towards Sodom. So that's really interesting now because Lot that means he pitched his tent towards the spiritual destination of Sodom, which means was he sinning? Was he sinning in his tent? And is that why the two daughters defiled him because of his works? And that comes back to free will and sin and consequence and repentance. So I just wanted to get this thought down because that's where I'm at at the moment with the land. I do believe this land of Canaan is a land that was purified and it's all got to do with the 12 tribes. And the mercy and the Lord of hosts that sits on the mercy seat between the two cherubims of the Ark of the Covenant, which is the same thing as the coffin of which Jacob's bones dwelt. And it's a very similar meaning to Noah's Ark. And I do note there as well, I hope I get this right, I looked it up the other day where Moses... Moses, something or rather, the basket, it equates to Ark too, I think, and his name was to means to be rescued from the water. Which brings you back to the water and the sea and where we are, and I could go on all day. So I am alive with the Lord yet again, as per usual. It just keeps dropping in, and this is what I'm saying, guys. He is communicating to me as I sleep my whole nighttime life is just full of dreams from the Lord Jesus Christ. It is momentous. It is magnificent. It is real. And I cannot get enough of it. And keep it coming, Lord. All right. And all power and all glory goes to Jesus Christ, our Savior, the King. Change your mind. The sun has come. You've been left me.